This is episode 33 of Spiritual AF with Pixie Rose, the podcast for people going on their spiritual journeys, knowing that we are spiritual beings having a human experience. Before we get into this episode, I wanted to share with you my online intuitive courses that are going to be running live on the 25th of February. I have two courses available. The first one is called Discover Your Intuition, which is a 10-week course for those of you at the beginning of your spiritual journey. So we cover 10 topics in 10 weeks mindfulness, meditation, clearing your energy, grounding your energy, protecting your energy, chakras, connecting to your higher self, spirit guides, working with the pendulum and empath gifts. At the end of this course, you will get an opportunity to do your first practice reading. So my courses are for anybody who wants to enhance and develop their intuition. So that's the first course for anybody who this is all completely new to you. And what this course is all about is giving you the foundations, really starting with some basic stuff, but it's all about creating some beautiful practices to get really centered and responsible for your energy. The next course is Enhance Your Intuition, which is a psychic development course. So I do recommend doing the Discover Your Intuition course first. But for those of you that feel like you've already got a pretty good grip on those topics from the first course, if you are interested in Enhance Your Intuition, just get in contact with me to my email. All my links are in the show notes. But email me and just let me know that you're interested in the Enhance Your Intuition Psychic Development course. This is an eight-week intensive course. We cover two topics each week. The topics are Unlocking the Clairs. So that's your clairvoyancy, your clairaudiency, all of those clairs, learning your strengths. Topic two is dream interpretation. In week two, we learn about reading a person's energy and aura, reading the environment. We do photo readings. I teach you all about the enchanted realms and how to do your own enchanted realms readings. We learn about psychometry, mediumship, oracle cards, tarot cards, past lives, the Akashic records, channeling, tuning into the collective, and high vibrational food and energy. Enhance Your Intuition is all about giving you those skills if you're interested in becoming a professional reader, or if you just want to deepen your intuitive skills. There are so many modalities here that we go through And we give you all the information on how to enhance it, what it all means, and have you feeling so confident in yourself. In this course, you have many, many opportunities to do practice readings on other people that are also doing the course live with you, as well as some really cool extras like a group past life regression and a private channeling session for those that are in the course only. So these courses are just incredible. I've worked my ass off for them and I can't wait to share them with you. So please, if you're interested in developing your intuition and your intuitive gifts, please get in contact with me and check out my courses. Check them out on my website. Welcome to Spiritual AF. I'm Pixie Rose and in today's episode I want to share with you all things love languages and erotic blueprints. 
The Five Love Languages is a book by Gary Chapman. And when I heard about this book, I was just so drawn to this because I just felt these different ways that I was expressing my love and ways that the people in my lo- my life were expressing their love. And I did notice that there there was different ways and almost like a miscommunication when we're expressing our love. So in the book, it goes through these five love languages. Now, those love languages are words of affirmation, acts of service, receiving gifts, quality time, and physical touch. And basically, the basis of this book is learning each other's love languages. Now, there is a five love languages website, and on that website, there's a quiz so you can quite easily start learning about your love languages simply by checking out the quiz and it will get sent straight to your email address. But I wanted to go through these different love languages on the podcast to just gauge a bit of understanding on the ways that people may be expressing their love to you and and how we can learn to love each other better and understand each other better. So the first love language is words of affirmation. Now this has always been my love language. If you can't half tell, I'm a bit of a talker. So I've always been really wordy. I've loved to write and read. I love to journal and write letters and I'm all about the words and and even I listen to other people's words and I've often in the past taken things by heart just because they've maybe used the wrong word in certain situations and and different things like that. So for some people like me, words of affirmation is really important. So for me, when I express my love, I tell people that I love them. And I know that there's been some people in my life that have been quite quite confronted with that and have been quite taken back and even kind of looked into it a bit too much. Like, it's not that when I say I love you to people, you know, I truly mean it. So when I use my words of affirmation, I do truly mean it. But I guess I express my love quite openly to people. And even if I've just known someone for a short time, if I feel that love energy, I will express it. But generally, somebody with a love language of words of affirmation, you will hear from them that they love you. You will hear them give you compliments and they'll they'll want to spend their time with you by talking and communicating or this may be you you may feel like you relate to this because you find yourself always being the one to say I love you first or just giving your loved ones compliments and different things like that so that's the first love language the next one is acts of service Now, this is actually one of Hayden's love languages. And even thinking back, probably my ex-husband's as well. So this is where you can start to see how these different love languages can, I guess, impact your relationship if you don't know that that's a love language. So acts of service for some people, these are people that love to cook their partners a meal. They love to do things for the ones that they love. This is how they show their partners or their loved ones, their family, that they love them. These are the people that will clean out your car or 
even the mums that love to clean out their kids' rooms, they just, they do these things to show how much they care. And the conflicting thing can be is for me, having words of affirmations as my love language, sometimes I don't always acknowledge those acts of service. Sometimes I might feel like I'm not receiving that love that I want because I'm not hearing it with the person's words. So it's been really transformational and a real game changer in acknowledging these other love languages. So knowing that when my partner cleans the kitchen or cooks me a meal, that is their way of showing me that they love me. I'll keep going through the love languages and then I'll go through exactly how you can make the most out of this. So the next one is receiving gifts. So this is my mum. My mum loves to buy things and it's her way of just showing us that she loves us. This is how grandparents often show their love to their grandkids. You know, they might not be able to do the other things, especially because with kids, sometimes it doesn't feel like they're taking on your words of affirmations. Although for me, I definitely tell my kids I love them all the time and they tell me that they love me. But for some people, that is their way of expressing their love. And again, for me, using me myself as an example, I have not in the past even accepted that receiving gifts could be a love language. I feel like I've not been super materialistic. And again, like I'm craving those words of affirmations. I want people to tell me that they love me. So when I receive a gift, again, I might not necessarily acknowledge that that's an expression of love. The next love language is quality time, or I often say presence. So being fully present with your partner, not scrolling on your phone while you're cuddling on the couch, being fully present and spending that quality time. So this isn't this isn't even necessarily about the amount of time that you get to spend together, but it's about quality time. So doing things that are of a good quality. So like going out and doing things together. This is that kind of person. It's somebody who might want to go for walks with you. They might want to do new things, go bowling or go to the movies or they want to do things and they want to spend that quality time. They might not even necessarily be big talkers. So again, you know, those people with that words of affirmation, they might not still feel that love. But for these people, it is their time that they are giving you. And ultimately, that's so special. We are all so held back with the amount of time that we have in some ways. There's only so much time in a day. And for someone to take that time and give it all to you, that is really special and beautiful. And it's, it's nice to acknowledge that. The last love language is physical touch. So these are people that are very cuddly, very affectionate. This, this type of person may even express their love by giving their partner a nice squeeze on the bum. Like they're all about that physical touch. Even this physical touch may come in the form of connecting sexually. This is that person that that is how they express their love is they want to be together physically. So I've mentioned it a few times, but what can come up is when one partner or in any of your relationships, so whether it's your mom, as I mentioned before, I remember not feeling like my mom loved me. 
because maybe I didn't hear it enough or I didn't feel like we connected on that communicative level. But ultimately, she did express her love in her own way. So by recognizing that we each may have a different love language. And even I'm not even sure if I've met any couples that have the same love language. I think that would be really interesting. So if you're listening to the, this episode and it's resonating, feel free to follow me on Instagram and comment on my post about this episode or tag me in your own post. And let me know what's your love language and what's your partner's love language? Is there anybody out there that has the same love language? How does that look for you? Because, yeah, from what I've seen is that we often have a different love language. So by reading this book or doing the quiz or just learning a little bit about love languages, you can recognize that People are expressing their love to you, but it may not be in the way that you truly desire. And by having this conversation with the people in your life and communicating that I'm a words of affirmation person and I appreciate receiving messages from you or I appreciate you talking to me and being vulnerable with me and telling me that you love me and complimenting me (laughs) and then my partner can say to me that they appreciate acts of service so finding a way for me to go really out of my way and really express my love in the way that they are going to receive it and vice versa that's with all of them So just creating some conversations in your life within your relationships. And I really do feel like this improves things in a big, big way. As I mentioned, we can tell stories that aren't exactly accurate. Sometimes they're just our perception and other people have completely different perception to us. So it's about recognizing that, learning learning about yourself and learning about the people around you and then just going that extra mile and doing something for your partner that it might not necessarily fill up your cup but it will fill up theirs and then for them to be able to do the same for you that's really going to transform your relationship and your connection So I will, of course, link this five love languages website in the show notes. So feel free to check it out and check out what your love language is and start sharing it with the people in your life so that they know what you like and they can start loving you in a way that you'll respond to. The next thing that I wanted to talk about is erotic blueprints. So I discovered Erotic Blueprints from the Melissa Ambrosini Show, which I do mention a lot in the podcast. I will link that particular episode in the show notes. But it was created by a woman named Jaya, and she's written quite a number of books, and she has a wonderful website and coaching program and all sorts of incredible things that she's doing But one thing in particular that she created was this idea very similar to the love languages. But this is all around your erotic blueprint. So what your erotic blueprint is, is like your sexual love language. So it is the way that you get turned on more or less. And as I mentioned, she's got lots of books on lots of different things, all things sex and eroticism and and everything juicy like that. She's really beautiful. And I absolutely loved hearing her talk and sharing the work that she's doing. So Jaya created this quiz to help people learn about what their erotic blueprints are. So I'll go through the list. But it's, it's slightly different to the love languages because instead of getting one result, you know, one love language, 
you'll actually get a percentage of how much you are of one thing and then the other because with the erotic blueprint it can definitely change depending on your mood it can change depending on your partner depending on what's going on in your life there's so many contributing factors so at the end of the quiz you'll get this score and you can see where you've got the most percentage in and maybe what your least percentage is so the first erotic blueprint is sexual so this one's quite self-explanatory but it is more or less the kind of person that is highly sexual so this kind of person gets turned on very easily they can get turned on just by thinking about sex or the mere mention of having sex and they will be ready to go a sexual erotic blueprint doesn't require a lot of foreplay this is somebody who's who's not very sensual who's just you know a quickie is like awesome for this person and it's very very physical that's the connection is it's a very physical connection the next erotic blueprint is sensual so most of us have heard about sensuality and that sort of thing it has been a bit foreign to me and even I've I've redone the quiz I think both times I got sensual oh no it's changed a little bit for me and again, this, this is why I, I wanted to share this on the podcast because it can change depending on your circumstances and your experiences and where you're at in life. But last time I did this quiz, which was a couple of years ago, sensual was at the bottom of the list for me and sexual was right up on the top. And now my sexual percentage is right down the bottom and then just above that is sensual. So when I talk about sensuality, it's kind of like a foreign topic for me. But as most people know, sensual people do need a lot of foreplay. So they're all about the massaging and the candles and setting the scene and just really taking your time. And, you know, these are people that are, they might be interested in tantra or just really feeling that connection, really feeling that love and feeling good about themselves. So sensual people to a sexual person, it may feel like a lot of work, if that makes any sense. Then next we've got kinky. Now again, originally when I did this quiz, I had the highest percentage rate of kinky. Oh, and I basically still do, but it's just come up second on my list. <laughs> basically, I've got 25% shapeshifter, which I'll get into that, and 25% kinky. <laughs> so those with a kinky erotic blueprint, again, this may be quite obvious, but these are people that are interested in alternative things they might be interested in some bdsm they might like a bit of spanking these may be people that have you know there's a whole variety of kinks really isn't there we could go on for days and days about all the different kinks but these are people that may get bored with a sexual person they need a lot of variety in their in their sex life. That's a kinky erotic blueprint. Next, we've got an energetic erotic blueprint. So this is somebody who it's kind of like a step up from sensual because the sensual person is all about touching in a sensual way and really building up. You know, it's all about that foreplay. Whereas the energetic blueprint is someone who is more about the energetic connection with somebody rather than the physical. Now, this is something that has been building up within me personally over the last year or two. As I mentioned originally when I did this quiz, I think I was neck and neck with kinky and sexual 
So I've definitely shifted a lot in the last two years in this area. And this is why it's great to revisit these things. If this is something that you've heard about before, check out the site again, redo your quiz and see where you're at now. Because yeah, for me, I've definitely become a lot more energetic and I, yeah, I I definitely enjoy feeling this energetic connection with other people. So for me, it used to be all about the sex, whereas now I'm kind of like, I'm kind of getting off just feeling your energy. (laughs) So the next erotic blueprint is a shapeshifter. And more or less the shapeshifter, I call this a hybrid in my enchanted realms, but shapeshifter is probably a much better word. Maybe I should change that. But shapeshifter obviously means that you can change. So my number one now is shapeshifter. So these, this is somebody who can sort of go into all of those areas. And again, depending on their mood or whatever. So what I found really interesting about this erotic blueprint was again, very much like the love language. So within my relationships, I felt like I knew myself because honestly, a couple of years ago when I did this quiz and I got kinky, I was like, what? Really? But then I thought about it and I was like, oh yeah, probably. I do like a bit of variety. (laughs) So it kind of gets you thinking a bit more about yourself and how often do we really reflect on how we have sex, right? So as I mentioned, and this is something that I remember Jaya talking about in this podcast episode that I'll link in with you guys, I think it was how she even came across this erotic blueprint was she started a relationship with a new partner and she's obviously a highly sexual person. And she started this relationship with a new partner and I relate to Jaya so much because this story is like exactly how I would initiate sex in the past And she spoke about how she's, you know, getting to know this new partner. And I don't know if it was at the beginning of the relationship or maybe towards the end after the honeymoon period is over because everyone's pretty highly sexual in the beginning of a relationship, aren't they? But she was talking about how she was in the mood and was initiating sex with her partner and she just goes and grabs his dick and says let's let's fuck more or less and he was not keen and she was kind of like what's going on here (laughs) like this usually works and then it turned out that he had this kinky erotic blueprint that she hadn't really explored much because that wasn't her erotic blueprint so throughout this relationship she discovered that there are these different ways that people are more drawn to or the way that people connect or as I mentioned before just the way that people get turned on is very different and having this understanding of yourself and your partner again this just like was a game changer for me when I heard this podcast and I did the quiz I literally sent this quiz to every single person in my life and clearly it's still impacting me years later because I've created this whole podcast episode around those two things. So when I meet someone new, I often talk, you know, I might ask them what's their love language, what's their erotic blueprint. I send them the quiz and we get to know each other like that and I just think it's great because Instead of going about something and there's no such thing as rejection, but trying to initiate sex with a sensual person when you're more sexual, clearly it's not going to flow very well. 
So if I know someone is sensual, then the way that I approach them, I'm going to make a really big effort to be more sensual. And obviously I have that capability because I am high up on that shapeshifter blueprint. After doing this quiz and sending it off to Hayden and getting his results and comparing our results, it made a lot of sense to why we were enjoying ourselves so much because we were really speaking the same language in our eroticism and that works <laughs> it's really hard for you know for me personally I'm not super sensual even now it's it's quite low on my list for me to have a sensual partner it might not work over a long period of time because I don't know how this sounds but because I'm not super sensual Maybe I'm, I wouldn't be able to fulfill that central need if I had a more central partner. And same as my ex-husband who <laughs> remains anonymous, thank goodness, on this podcast because clearly I'm oversharing heaps. But I, I did send it to my ex-husband because we just kind of have that relationship as I mentioned, I literally sent this quiz to every single person in my life, even my sisters and stuff. Like, yeah, I'm just really open when it comes to sexuality. So I sent it to my ex-husband and he got high on the energetic level. And as I mentioned before, a couple of years ago, my top scores were sexual and well, kinky and then sexual. And then my ex-husband's was high up on energetic and I was like, oh, but you can start to see by doing this quiz and exploring those different erotic blueprints, how there can be some, hmm, not conflicts, but ways that certain partners may not line up. So it's really good when you meet a partner and they can match your erotic blueprint. You know that things are going to be a bit more long lasting because it's the same, you know, in the opposite way of my versions. Somebody who is really sensual, and if they have a sexual partner, then you can imagine that that sensual partner is not going to get enough for sex to actually happen. So it's either you work with this erotic blueprint and you might need to go that extra mile for your partner because you know how to speak their language, you know how to get their body talking and responding to you. Or you find a partner with a very similar erotic blueprint. So I do hope that this little snippet of those two things combined is helpful for you. Please, if you've never looked into either of these things, check out the quizzes. They really don't take long at all. You'll get the results sent straight to your email and just start learning a little bit more about yourself. You may be pleasantly surprised. And if you are, definitely get your partner to do it because... It's just going to open up a whole world. And especially if you are feeling unsatisfied in that department. There's one thing that can come up in my readings. I can tell when someone hasn't had sex in a while. I don't know what it is, but I can feel it. And it doesn't feel good. We all want to feel satisfied. And the only way we can feel satisfied is by learning what we need and expressing that some people may just not realize that they need a bit more sensuality or as I mentioned I'm high up on that energetic connection now so for me I do need a pretty strong energetic connection to feel that sexual connection as well or that sexual attraction, I should say. 
So it's not that you're that there's anything wrong with anybody. That's a thing. None of us are broken. We just talk different languages sometimes. So just check it out. As I mentioned, it's really rocked my world and I love hearing about it. So feel free to let me know what your sexual blueprint is. I'd love to hear from you. I'd love to hear if you enjoyed this episode, if it's changed your relationship, please let me know. And remember, even if your wings have been clipped off, they can always regrow.